contrary to the biblical requirement against human sacrifices, God calls Abraham to do the unthinkable. Why such a difficult test? How does Abraham respond? We are continuing our study of the first book of the Bible, Genesis, the book of beginnings. As you can see, this book is filled with drama and information and instructions that can help us live better, happier, healthier, more peaceful and prosperous lives. In this book, we have seen many dramatic beginnings. The book begins with God speaking a perfect universe into existence. It tells of God creating our first parents, Adam and Eve. The drama unfolds with the beginning of sin on this planet when Adam and Eve make the mistake of disregarding God's instructions. Their choice is the beginning of the knowledge of good and evil. The knowledge of good and evil was something God wanted to protect them from. However, their disobedience introduced the knowledge of good and evil to the entire human race. Thus, we learn of the beginning of God's plan to redeem us humans and the battle between good and evil. Our Heavenly Father, we trust that you order everything for us according to your wisdom and your divine purpose. Help us not to be dissatisfied and distrustful, but may we humbly bow in reverent submission to your divine will. We humbly ask you, dear Father, that you reveal to us as much of your purpose as it is for our good to know. And beyond that, dear God, help us to trust your loving heart and omnipotent hand. In Jesus' name, amen. Our key text is Genesis 24.1. Now, Abraham was old, well advanced in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. God called Abraham to be the father of the faithful. His life was to stand as an example of faith to succeeding generations, but his faith had not been perfected. He had shown distrust in God when he concealed the fact that Sarah was his wife. He also showed a lack of trust again when he married Hagar, Sarah's maid, so that he could have a son by her. Hence, offering him the opportunity to reach the highest standard, God gave him another test, a makeup test, if you will. Makeup tests are often the hardest to pass because you've had additional time to study. The test God gave Abraham is the hardest that any would ever be called to endure. In a night vision, he was directed to prepare to go to the land of Moriah. He was instructed to offer his son Isaac as a sacrifice, a burnt offering on a mountain that God would show him. When God gave him this command, Abraham was 120 years old. Even in his generation, he was considered an old man. His days of youthfulness and strength are long gone. In his earlier years, he was strong. He was able to endure hardship and face danger. But now, he is now old, weak, and feeble, and almost ready for the grave. But his last test, the final exam, is the most trying test of all. God had withheld it. It was withheld until he was drained by the trials of life and longed for rest from anxiety and labor. Genesis 22, 1 through 12, and Hebrews 11, 17 help us to better understand the meaning of the test and its spiritual significance. 
Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. Then he said, take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son. And he split the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey, the lad and I will go yonder and worship and we will come back to you. So Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son, and he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and the two of them went together. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, my father, and he said, here I am, my son. Then he said, look, the fire and the wood, but where's the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, my son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together. Then they came to the place of which God had told him. And Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order. And he bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, here I am. And he said, do not lay your hands on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. Hebrews eleven seventeen. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promise offered up his only son. God commanded Abraham to give him Isaac as a burnt offering. This command goes against the biblical command against sacrifice as expressed in Leviticus 18.21. And you shall not let any of your descendants pass through the fire to Malik, or shall you profane the name of your God, I am the Lord. God forbids his people to kill other humans and offer them as religious offerings to him. Why test Abraham in such a powerful and most difficult way? First, we must understand what a Bible test is. Then we will better understand the answer to this difficult question. In the Bible, a test includes two parts or ideas. The first part of a Bible test is to show what is in the heart of the one being tested as in Deuteronomy 8, 2. And you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these four years in the wilderness to humble you and test you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. Then the second part of a Bible test shows the mercy of God to the person who takes the test as in Exodus 20, 18 through 20. Now all the people witnessed the thundering, the lightning flashing, the sound of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they trembled and stood afar. Then they said to Moses, you speak with us and we will hear 
but let not God speak to us, lest we die. And Moses said to the people, do not fear, for God has come to test you, and that his fear may be before you, so that you may not sin. In this case, Abraham's faith in God takes him to the point that he runs the risk of losing his future. That is his future children that would be born to him through Isaac. And yet, because he trusts God, he will do what God asks, no matter how difficult it all is, and even if he does not understand the test. After all, what is faith? Faith means we trust in what we do not see or completely understand. Bible faith is not about what we offer to God. Yes, what we offer to God is important as expressed in Romans 12, 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is our reasonable service. And yet, because we trust God, we will do what God asks, no matter how difficult it is to understand. Faith is about our trust in God and accepting his mercy and grace while understanding just how undeserving we are. We see this in what is following on the mountain of Moriah. Look at all the good things that Abraham did in his life before this time. Abraham did many good works. He was kind and helpful to other people. Now he must take a trip to the mountain of Moriah with his son. For sure, this trip caused Abraham great suffering as he thinks about what will happen to Isaac there. But none of these things are enough to save Abraham. Why? Because as we see later, the Lord himself provides a ram for the intended sacrifice. The provided sacrifice itself pointed to his only hope for salvation, Jesus. This story with Abraham shows us the mercy of God for us. Our good behavior does not save us. Only the obedience of Jesus saves us. This we see in Ephesians 3.8. To me, who am less than the least of all the saints, this grace was given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. As compared to Romans 11.33, which says, Oh, the depths of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments and unfathomable his ways. This is not to say that works should be cast aside because of faith. This is the point that James makes in James 2, 7 through 18. Even so, faith, if it has no works, is dead being by itself. But someone may say, well, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without the works, and I will show you my faith by my works. In other words, we show our faith by our works. On Abraham and Isaac's trip to Mount Moriah, Isaac asked his dad a question. What was it? And how did Abraham respond to the question? Find out in part three, God will provide.